This is the story of Ronnie Fields, a high school basketball player from Chicago who dominated with Kevin Garnett and was supposed to be the next great scorer in the NBA. If you ask NBA fans in Chicago back in 1995, what was the toughest ticket to get in the city? Would it surprise you if the answer was not Michael Jordan's Chicago Bulls? Getting a ticket to see Jordan's Bulls was hard to get, but it was even harder to see a game at Farragut Academy where Ronnie Fields and Kevin Garnett dominated Chicago high school basketball for a year. $2 tickets to get into Farragut Academy's city championships were being resold for $50 to $60, and people paid for those tickets. At the time in 1995, Ronnie was as recognizable as Michael Jordan and Oprah in the city of Chicago. He was a rock star. Fields was so beloved in Chicago that whenever he would go get food at the nearby McDonald's, he would never have to pay for what he ordered. Shout out to the few people who suggested to me that I should do a video on Ronnie Fields, so let's get right into the story. As a 15 year old, Ronnie Fields already had the physical maturity to compete with the best ballers in Chicago. Every summer he was working out with the pros that came home, so he had the confidence he was going to be ready once his name was called. He made the varsity team as a freshman and was ESPN High School's number one ranked freshman in 1993. In his sophomore year, Fields was the first sophomore ever to play in the best of the best game at the Nike All-American camp. Allen Iverson was at the camp, and that's where Fields would meet his future high school teammate Kevin Garnett. He would slowly improve his all-around game by his senior year, but he was known for his finishing ability, his dunks, and his insane reported 50-inch vertical. Let me say it again, a 50-inch vertical. He could jump out of the gym. At 6'3", 185 pounds, he was too quick and too strong for any defender to check him. Even without a consistent jump shot, he was close to unstoppable driving to the rim. If he got to the rim, he was dunking on you. There are highlights of him jumping over the top of players for dunks. His sophomore season was a success individually. Going into the summer of 1993, where he would meet a future NBA Hall of Famer to form a duo that Chicago high school basketball fans would never forget. Ronnie Fields met Kevin Garnett at the Nike All-American camp in 93. They roomed together, they quickly became friends, and KG constantly told Ronnie that it would be crazy if they teamed up to play together at the same high school. Then one day before the start of the 1994-1995 high school basketball season, Fields says he randomly saw Garnett hanging out in his neighborhood. He was shocked and said, what are you doing here all the way up in Chicago? And KG just straight up told Ronnie, I moved here. I'm going to go to Farragut. After three years of playing high school basketball in South Carolina, Garnett transferred to Farragut Academy to team up with Ronnie Fields. Next to KG, Ronnie would continue to terrorize opposing defenses and basketball rims. He averaged 23 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists in his junior season. Together, Garnett and Fields formed one of the most dominant duos in high school basketball history. He and KG would lead Farragut to a 28-1 record and the number one seed going into the Illinois State High School Association playoffs. Chicago basketball analyst Dave Kaplan said they were like the Beatles. Everyone wanted to see KG and Ronnie Fields in person. But their first game of the playoffs did not go as most expected as they were upset 46-43 in the quarterfinals by a team led by Melvin Eli, a 6'10 power forward who played 10 seasons in the NBA and NFL player Antoine Randall L was also on that team. It was only one high school basketball season together and it didn't end up in a championship, but Fields and Garnett developed a lifetime friendship. In 1996, without Kevin Garnett, it was Ronnie Fields' time to carry the team. His numbers exploded in his last high school basketball season. 32 points per game, 12 rebounds, five assists, as well as four and a half blocks and four steals per game. He bumped his scoring total by almost 10 points from his junior year. Fields used that 50 inch vertical to grab all those boards and the blocks and the steals numbers are really impressive. He was a first team McDonald's All-American with Mike Bibby, Kobe Bryant, Tim Thomas, and Jermaine O'Neal. Fields also won Illinois' Mr. Basketball. But things took a turn for the worse for Ronnie Fields one week before the start of the city playoffs that started the derailment of his chances at the NBA. On a rainy night in February 1996, a week before the start of the playoffs, he was driving his car at night, he lost control of the car, crashed it, and broke several bones in his neck. Doctors performed surgery to repair a fractured bone in his neck. The sad part is this incident could have been avoided completely. The head coach of the Farragut basketball team rented the car for Ronnie and allowed him to drive it even though he was not legally old enough to drive a rented vehicle. The head coach was eventually fired and banned from coaching in Chicago Public League because of the accident. A few months after the accident, he was hanging out with a friend watching Jordan highlights. 
and then he received a phone call and learned that his friend had been shot and killed. Even through all of that, Ronnie Fields was still prepared to enroll at DePaul University in the summer of 1996. He was going to get his grades up for one year at the school, then be eligible to play basketball the year after, but it never got that far as his application was declined by the university because his high school test scores were not up to par. Ronnie was not mad at DePaul's decision, he accepted it and moved on. I'm not mad at DePaul University, you know, the decision they made, you know, at the time, it was a little late, but you know, I respect that. It kept getting worse for Ronnie Fields as shortly after he recovered from the accident, he and two other men pled guilty to misdemeanor criminal sexual abuse of a woman in September of 1996. He was sentenced to probation. So in just a span of five months, he went from being a future NBA player to being completely off the NBA's radar. Fields has had a lot of time to think about his past. He has accepted his mistakes and wants people to know this about him. There's a lot more in life than going to play a professional sport. It's about growing up to be a human being, a good person, and being an educated person. Since the NBA was no longer a possibility in 1996, he looked at the Continental Basketball Association. You know, things could have gotten even worse for Ronnie than they already were, but he knew he had a shot at building himself back up and redeeming himself as a person. Fields declared himself eligible for the 1996 CBA draft and was selected in the seventh round before then declaring for the 1997 NBA draft, but withdrew his name. He had another shot at entering the draft in 1998, but he wasn't selected by a team, but getting denied by the NBA never stopped his love for basketball. Fields moved around a lot over the 2000s, from the Philippines Basketball Association to Turkey, Lebanon, Greece, and a number of other countries. Then in November 2008, he played one final year in the CBA where he averaged 21 points, 4.9 assists, and 2 steals. He ended up becoming the only player in CBA history to lead the league in scoring and steals in back-to-back -back seasons. Today, Ronnie Field is now 40 years old and is still seen as a celebrity at his old high school. There is a giant mural of him dunking a basketball with his career statistics on the side. He often goes back to Farragut Academy where he hosts free basketball clinics for younger players. Ronnie Fields did a panel with Kenny Smith, 2 Chains, D. Brown, and journalists about the importance of sports. Fields assisted in a $40,000 donation to help fix the basketball courts in Columbus Park where he grew up playing at. Kevin Garnett considered him a better player when they played together. He was one of the top ranked high school guards in the country but never got a shot at the NBA. But Fields is not bitter and has made peace with how his life has gone. He said in an interview with Sports Illustrated, I'm happy to see that Derrick Rose didn't make some of the mistakes that I made. It's praise to be mentioned because when people are not talking about you, then you must not be important. I've influenced people in many ways, good and bad. The final quote of the video from Ronnie, even though he crashed hard after his senior year and understands he is a what could have been, he is proud of the path his life took him. People can't say, this kid dropped out and hung on the street corner and gave up on life. I pushed through the situation, I owned up to the things I did and became a better person, player and father. Those things are more important to me than playing professional basketball. And that is the story of Ronnie Fields, a Chicago high school basketball legend who never got a shot at the NBA. I had fun researching and looking up stories about Ronnie Fields. Definitely an interesting story. Again, shout out to the people who suggested I make this video. I might make other videos like this about high school players. We'll see. Leave a like as it helps my channel grow and subscribe if you have not already. I'll see you guys in my next video.